Okay. Um, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for attending the IGES webinar on Voluntary Local Reviews 2022, Overcoming Barriers to Implementation. Before starting the program, please let us give you a housekeeping announcement. Please be informed that this webinar is recorded and the recording will be uploaded to the IGES website. Please choose the language you'd like to listen, either English or Japanese, from the interpretation function button. You will find the button on the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of the screen. If you join by your smartphone, please find the interpretation function button by tapping the three points icon on the bottom right. If you would like to give questions to the panelists, please make comments to Q&A box. Chat box nor raising hand function is not available for the audience in this webinar. Now the session will start soon. Sorry, thank you very much for the participating the, uh, the, this webinar. Uh, the Voluntary Local Review 2022, overcoming uh, the barriers uh, to the implementation. So the, uh, I'm, my name is Jessica Kataoka. Uh, I'm the uh, program director of the City Task Force of the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, uh, we call it ISIS. So the, uh, and then the, first of all, I would like to uh, you know, ask uh, the uh, Mr. Takahashi Yasuo, the executive director of the ISIS, uh, to make an opening remarks. So the uh, Takahashi Shocho, please. Uh, thank you, Kataoka san uh... Distinguished guests, uh, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, my name is Yasuo Takahashi. Uh, I'm the executive director of IGES, uh, located in Hayama, Japan. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome all the participants to this uh, IGES webinar on voluntary local reviews 2022, overcoming barriers to implementation. In my, in my opening remarks, uh, please allow me to speak uh, a little bit on the role of voluntary local reviews or VLRs uh, in advancing the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. A VLR is a process through which a local or regional government conducts a voluntary review of the progress towards the sustainable development goals. VLRs help cities to better understand their performance against the SDGs uh, to, to monitor progress and to share success stories as well as challenges in localizing the 2030 agenda. As you may be well aware, uh, the VLR movement originated in 2018 when four cities presented their first ever voluntary local reviews at the, at the high level political forum held in New York. Three of them were Japanese local governments who had uh, developed their VLR with support from IGES, namely Kita Kyushu, Shimokawa, and Toyama. Uh, Kita Kyushu in Fukuoka Prefecture, a city in which grassroots movements uh, led by women uh, fought against pollution in the 1960s and resulting in a new development model based on green in industries. Shimokawa town in Hokkaido is the smallest local government to date to conduct a voluntary local review with a bit of over 3,000 3, inhabitants. The town is confronting severe pollution, population aging and shrinkage by em embracing the SDGs as a guideline, guiding principle to advance sustainable urban development. Finally, Toyama in Toyama Prefecture. Toyama is aware of the environmental impact of urban sprawl, and therefore the city is implementing a concept compact city model structured along public transport lines to decrease the, the dependency on private people. Together with New York, these three Japanese local governments pioneered a move, movement that have growth in importance in subsequent years. 24 local and regional governments presented a VLR in 2019, including the Japanese city of Hamamatsu. 
the movement grew to 35 VRRs in 2020, despite the challenges, challenges posed by the novel coronavirus pandemic. In 2021, 49 local and regional governments presented a VRR. Tokyo and Yokohama, Japan, Japan's two largest cities, present, presented their first VRRs then. In just four years, the VRR movement has grown to play a fundamental role in implementing the CDGs at the subnational level. IGES has supported the debate on the VRR movement. IGES presented the Shimokawa model for voluntary local reviews as a guideline to support the efforts of cities to develop their VRR. This was inspired by the experience of Shimokawa town. We also launched the first online repository of VRR reports, our VRR lab. The VRR lab brings together VRR reports in one single easy to access website. I invite you, invite you to check, check it after this webinar. Moreover, two years ago, I just presented the first volume of the State of the Voluntary Local Reviews series. This annual series aims at exploring the, the evolution of the VRR movement, identifying areas needing further development, and recommending courses of action for following years. It is with the occasion of the launching of, this, of the third volume of this series that we are gathering here today. The state of the voluntary local reviews 2022, overcoming barriers to implementing analysis, analysis 36 VRRs present, presented in 2021. The report first, book, first looks at how VRRs are reflecting the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And then it, it then explores how VRRs accelerate the localization of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Finally, it reflects on the four years of the VRR movement, examining cities that, that have conducted more than one VRR. Before concluding my uh, remarks, I would like to echo the conclusions uh, from this year's report. Conducting a VRR brings five meaningful benefits to local governments. First, to kickstart or accelerate sustainable development. Second, to support thinking about the, the SDGs at the local level. Third, to advance horizontal integration within the local government. Fourth, to advance vertical cooperation between different levels of government. And fifth, to increase the capacity of local governments to communicate with citizens and global community. I wish you all a good and productive webinar. I hope this, that this discussion will inspire more cities to take on the challenge of conducting a VRR and to advance a more integrated approach to sustainable development. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, Mr. Takahashi, for, uh, for your opening remarks. So now uh, the, I would like to ask uh, you know, my colleague, uh, Fernando Ortiz Moya, uh, the operation researcher of the City Task Force of the IJAS, to introduce the key points of the, our new publications. So Fernando, the uh, floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Kataoka. Kataoka-san. Welcome everybody, and uh, thank you so much for joining me here today. So as Kataoka-san just uh, mentioned, I'm gonna introduce this year's report, uh, the state of the voluntary local reviews 2022, overcoming barriers to implementation. So uh, as you might be aware, um, I just presented the first state of the voluntary local reviews in 2020, entitled Local Action for Global Impact in Achieving the SDGs, to reflect on the ongoing, on the, on the VLR movement or the voluntary local review movement and how uh, frontrunner cities were implementing, were taken to the VLR to advance the, the localization of the SDGs. And then last year, we presented our second edition uh, entitled From Reporting to Action. 
So here we are here today uh, to celebrate the launching of, the, of this third edition in which we review the VLRs published in 2021. So first, as a brief introduction uh, to all of you, although I assume you might be aware of what is a voluntary local review, but it's a process through which a local or a regional government uh, voluntarily conduct an assessment of their progress towards implementing the 2030 Agenda and its SDGs. So it serves for, for local governments to share their experience, challenges, and lessons learned. Also, uh, can help to create new partnerships, fill in the gaps of new implementation, as well as to review the monitoring, to, to review and monitor progress towards the goal, find synergies between policies, uh, and limit trade-offs, and really make the SDGs, which were made as a global goal for everybody, make sense, make them make sense for the local context and for the and for the local or regional government conducting the VLR. So between 2018 and 2021, uh, almost 100 local and regional governments have conducted um, a voluntary local review. As you can see here in this map, uh, covering um, North America, Latin America, and the Caribbean, Europe, Asia, and the Pacific, and Africa. So you can see how the VLR movement it's, uh, has expanded all over, all over the world. So this year report, um, we, we are um, having uh, four key questions. So first, how are VLRs reflecting the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic? Second, how VLRs are accelerating the localization of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development? Uh, third, how are cities conducting success, uh, successive VLRs? And fourth, uh, which are the different approaches um, that have developed since 2018? So first, let's provide an overview of the, VLR, of the VLR movement in 2021. As you can see here, 18 VLRs were presented by local and regional governments from Europe, 16 from um, Asia and the Pacific region, 10 in Latin American and the Caribbean region, fourth in, uh, four in North America, and one in Africa. And so you can see how it's still uh, Asia and Europe are there are more local governments uh, joining the VLR movement, both cities or regional governments. Um, VLRs by language, we can also see how there are still a growing important, uh, at least 27 reports have published at least a version in English, although in some cases like um, there are English and the local languages. Also, we have uh, seven VLRs presented in Spanish, one in Albanian, two in Turkish, one in Norwegian, and one in Italian. This is the VLR that has only one single language and that is not translated into English. And at the same time, we have um, 40 were presented by municipal governments, by cities or towns, eight by regional governments. And for the first time, there was one VLR presented by a district of a city. So not even a whole city, just a neighborhood of a district, uh, which is a new trend. And there's already one more VLR in 2022 by another district of another city. And by population, the largest group of cities are cities between one and 10 million people with 17 uh, VLRs. Uh, like for example, today we have uh, Barcelona and New Taipei both fall in this category of uh, large size cities. Two of the VLRs were produ produced by cities of over 10 million people. So what usually come uh, refer as mega cities. Eight of them were presented by local governments of less than 250,000 inhabitants. For example, today we also have the example of Asker here with us. And then um, mid-sized cities uh, were also a big, uh, they also represent a big part of the, of the group of VLRs in 2021. And then by seeing who, which one the largest and the smallest uh, city, Eskiathos in Greek, in Greece was, uh, is a municipality with just 6,000 inhabitants being the smallest. And Tokyo, with over 14 million uh, people, was the largest VLR produced in 2021. And we can see here, this is map is just focusing on the local and regional governments that were presented in 2021. And for this year's report, 
we focused on VLRs produced by cities. So we are not looking into VLRs produced by regional governments. And we are also looking into only into reports that had an English or a Spanish version. So we are not able to, to do an in-depth review of reports written in other languages than English or Spanish. So first, looking how the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has impacted the, the VLR movement. So unquestionably, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected local progress towards the SDGs. So while already some of the VLRs presented in 2020 were already um, hinting how COVID might affect their development, uh, we can see how, how many of the VLRs of 2021 have addressed the issue of COVID-19 mainly focus on how it has uh, how the local government has implemented measures to cope with the impact of the um, of the pandemic and to a lesser extent vls has also worked, uh, reflected on how to build back better um, at the same time in order to look at how the vls has helping to localize global agendas uh, we have analyzed the the 36 selected VLRs across through, uh, four different topics that are considered fundamental to localize the SDGs, including what was the motivation to conduct a VLR, what was the stakeholder engagement process implement, uh, used during the VLR uh, process itself, how did the local government uh, conduct the SDG alignment, alignment its policy with the SDGs, and then how are they monitoring, tracking progress, and defining local indicators. So um, although you have a more detailed information in the report, and I don't want to take too much time uh, today, just as an example of analyzing what is the motivation of uh, local governments to conduct a VLR. So why are cities um, taken into this exercise? We can see that there are like four main uh, trends that are reported by cities. First, to increase the engagement with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and also to be engaged with global debates on sustainable development. So cities are, as leading agents in sustainability, they are taking into account, they are the VLR as a way to increase their global outlook and to engage with these debates. Also to baseline current performance and ongoing SDG work. So cities are using the VLR to see where they are standing and then be able to to better understand where do we have to go and what are the main elements that need to develop in the future. Um, third, to enhance sustainable initiatives. So the VLR is a tool for self-reflection and many cities are using the VLR to enhance sustainable initiatives and look into how they can think better and, and be more uh, streamline their policies for sustainable sustainability. And finally, to communicate both with ex internal and external stakeholders, fostering peer learning and sharing best practices. So the cities see the VLR as a very powerful tool to communicate both within the local administration and also with stakeholders, both at the local, regional, national and global level. So, and this is also helping cities to connect with one another, to share their initiatives and to really get um, get to create partnerships to advance the global goals. And when looking how, because we have already had four years of uh, the VLR movement. So uh, in these four years, there are already nine cities have, have produced more than one VLR. So the 2030 agenda recommends regular reviews of progress and they for better integrating the, the SDGs and also for being able to keep on track of their deadline to 2030. So up to now there are nine cities that has produced more than one VLR, including two of our uh, guests today, Barcelona and New Taipei, which both has conducted two VLRs. But we can see here that there are other cities like Buenos Aires, Kent, Helsinki, Los Angeles, New York, Sao Paulo, and Taipei, that has also conducted at least two or more VLRs. And cities are doing this faster than national countries. So while there are not so many uh, national governments that has presented two or three um, 
voluntary national reviews, cities in a shorter time span because the VLR started two years late, two years after the national voluntary national reviews. We can see how cities are very committed to the VLR exercise and they are really looking into expanding and using integrating it more into their governance structures. And for example, we can see here um, in the report, we make a quick assessment of how these cities are, are reflecting and what are the differences and how they are really looking into their, their development, how are they approaching to the successive uh, review cycles of the VLR. So then we have we look back to all the VLRs presented until 2018, and we identified different approaches to the VLR process. So for example, VLRs are used to align policies to the SDGs. They are also helping to choose a desired future. So for example, local governments are using the VLR exercise to question where they want to be in 2030 and identify ways that they can advance to that desired future also to engage with society. So VLRs have a stakeholder engagement processes and it's help um, to, to communicate with local stakeholders and also with uh, wider uh, global, um, global partners to monitor progress, which is a very, um, very important to see how you are doing. And especially with events such as COVID-19 pandemic, where some cities might have experienced um, a regression in some in some aspects and might change the, the priorities it helps to really see how where you are going and which are the aspects that you are both outperforming but also underperforming to be able to tailor your policies to achieve the 2030 agenda also as i mentioned before to set baselines and another approach that we are seeing that has recently emerged is a storytelling Cities are using their VLRs to tell stories, to tell their own story about sustainable development and the journey and how they are uh, communicating with society to really achieve the SDGs. So just to conclude, um, and I think Takahashi, uh, Mr. Takahashi already uh, hinted uh, this in his speech, like the, um, we have believed there are five main benefits of conducting a VLR that cities can find. First, to kickstart sustainable development. Although usually many of the VLRs were presented by frontrunner cities that has a long history of sustainable development, we can see how in 2021 there were some other cities that were using the VLR, move, the VLR to start their sustainable development journey. So there are cities that might not have had such a long history of sustainability, which are using the VLR to really get ordered policies together and start this journey, which I think is very valuable. Also to think about the SDGs, again, as the, um, the SDGs were created mostly by national governments and with there are many targets that doesn't apply at the local level. So, or it's changed depending context, context to context, or national context to national context. So many uh, local governments are using the SDGs to think about uh, the VLR, to think about the SDGs, and what it means in the local level and what it means for the communities and for the city and for the local governments and how they can really work to achieve it. Also, VLRs are helping to advance horizontal integration. So when the local administration is conducting the VLR, there is usually cross-departmental work and there is work together between different departments and different sectors within the local government. So the VLR is helping to create these channels for keeping an open conversation between different departments and break the so-called silo approach that it's making all the, all the different departments of the local government not to, to talk to each other. Also, VLS has the power to advance vertical cooperation, bringing a collaboration between local and national governments, and finally also to communicate. So they are helping to talk to other to communities and to the global community. So without, uh, far, without anything else, I mean, you can, I invite you to check the report and also to check our VLR lab where you can find uh, a collection of good practices on the VLR movement and as well as the VLRs of uh, Barcelona, Asker and Utah Bay here with us today and a link to this report, which I will also share in the chat box. So thank you very much. Um, and I hope you have a good webinar ahead. 
Thank you, Fernando, uh, for your the good presentation uh, and the rest of the key, uh, the message of the publication, our new publication. So uh, we put the, you know, the, uh, the uh, URL uh, of the publication. So please, you know, uh, look at the publications later. So now uh, we move on to the panel session part. So the this panel is uh, the uh, uh, titled entitled the uh, the benefits of conducting uh, VORs, and then we are invited three speakers from three cities uh, that conducted the VORs in 2021, and uh, namely SK Norway, Barcelona Spain, and the New Taipei uh, from Taiwan. So all speakers uh, joining us today. Uh, led and then the, the DP engaged in the VR's planning, also the processes. So uh, it's great to hear uh, that their stories uh, of the VR processes today. So the um, this panel session uh, it constitutes two uh, parts: first and real experiences the uh, from the speakers and also the discussion. So now I would like to invite the first speaker. The first speaker is Mr. Martin uh, Hussle. Uh, the uh, International uh, the Cooperation and the Public Relations Advisor of SK Municipality uh, of the Norway, uh, Norway. So the Martin floor is, your, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. And uh, thank you so much for inviting us to the webinar on the VLRs. Uh, I'm, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, present to you uh, Oscar Municipality's work on localizing the sustainable development goals as reported in our uh, voluntary local review from 2021. Oscar is a peninsula in uh, the Oslo Fjord. It's situated close to the capital of Oslo. Before 2020, we were three separate municipalities, namely Hurum, Reiken, and Asker. As part of a regional reform in 2014, the Norwegian parliament asked all municipalities in Norway to consider merging with one or more of their neighbors to create larger and more efficient units. Asker was already a big and efficient municipality by Norwegian standards, but initiated open political discussions and assessments with all our neighboring municipalities. In 2016, Oscar Hurum and Reiken municipalities decided to merge and become new Oscar as of January 2020, and uh, then becoming the eighth largest municipality in Norway. The UN Sustainable Development Goals were launched around the same time as our merger began. Uh, so originally our three uh, mayors, uh, it was their initiative to use the SDGs as a framework for building our new municipality. Shortly after the Joint Executive Council in charge of the ongoing merger decided to pursue the SDGs through our municipal master plan and all sectoral policies. So both the politicians, the administrations and our citizens were involved in this initiative and the 2030 agenda was considered an exciting, <clears throat> sorry, framework for sustainable action at the local level and also fitting the purpose of starting fresh with building something new from the start. The task of integrating the SDGs with goals, targets, and strategies into the framework for building the new municipality was huge and complex. Therefore, we organized it as a program consisting of many different projects. All elected officials, administration representatives, and trade unions worked together in this process. This resulted in a method for translating the goals to our local reality and making them relevant to our local community. In developing this method, local politicians worked across party political lines and traditional sectoral thinking. The Sustainable Development Goals contributed to creating a shared position. Traditionally, we have the national and regional guidelines as a framework for our municipal master plans. 
The SDGs added a global dimension to our planning, consciously placing our municipal development into a broader and global sustainability context, motivating and guiding our work. <clears throat> From the top triangle, you will see the broad-based starting point descending with progressional pro processes from the global to the local perspective. The bottom triangle describes the hierarchy of our local plans where initiatives are incorporated for subsequent implementation. During this process, we assessed all the 17 goals and 169 targets and their relevance for new OSCAR. We translated the goals into what they mean for our municipality before we identified which of the targets had most relevance for our work. We defined strategies to reach these targets and identify relevant parties within the local community to participate. By using a materiality matrix, we assessed which goals were the most relevant to prioritize when building our new municipality. During the two years, we analyzed and prioritized the goals and targets in relation to our local context. Politicians, the administration and citizens were all given active roles in integrating the goals for the master plan. We developed local indicators to measure and monitor our work. These methods, manuals and plans now ensure that the SDGs are at the core of our municipal governance model, all the way from planning to practical implementation in the topical plans, action program, and in the budgets. We have also started an implementation program for sustainable OSCAR uh, and measure that our actions are in accord with our plans and methods. In 2020, just after the launch of our new municipality, OSCAR participated at the World Urban Forum to share our work with implementing the SDGs and our extensive youth participation program. The New York Mayor's Office invited cities at the Congress to produce voluntary local reviews to compile understanding methods and experiences working with localizing the SDGs. In our VLR, we present an overview of our work so far and our progress going forward. To answer the initial question, I think the benefits of conducting a VLR is that it generates knowledge on the vast diversity in both structuring the totality of local governance in a sustainability perspective and of the various guideline criteria <clears throat> from organizations like UNECE, UN Habitat, UCLG, OECD, and so on, and knowledge sharing and agenda setting between cities. It also enables better systemic approaches and reveals areas in need of strengthening efforts in municipal management. When looking at all the possible guidelines for VLRs and all the available indicators for measuring SDG progress and impact, we have come ac across a plethora of KPI sets and recommendations. This jungle of possibilities has led us to join forces with the Norwegian Association of Local and Regional Authorities and the Norwegian Statistical Office to develop a newly launched taxonomy for indicators related to the Sustainable Development Goals for easier sorting, assessing and monitoring which indicators are better suited for our needs as a local public sector authority. Our SDG methodology to progress reports and our VLR are available in English. Please contact me if you would like further information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin san. It's very, very informative, you know, the uh, presentations. Uh, I think the SDG is the kind of the guide guidance uh, of the like a new sustainable plan of the new kind of the SK. So the it's kind of you know very interesting that the SDG can be a tool to make the uh, the um yeah the policies better. So the yeah, and also the yeah, thank you very much for the suggestions for the jungle of the guidelines and indicators. I think the uh, many kind of municipality feel the same things, and then uh, you, know, you show some example how you know 
you can kind of survive from that 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 jungles. So thank you very much. Maybe we will come back to you later uh, for the discussion. Thank you. thank you very much. So now I will move to uh, move on to the next speaker, uh, Mr. Ramon Canal uh, Olivares, so director of the technical. Uh, Planning and uh, uh, plan, uh, program uh, the, the office of, at the Barcelona City Council. So, the uh, Ramon, thank you very much for waiting. So, floor is now yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Iges, and um, thank you also for the outstanding presentations that, that came before. Um, now, I'm going to introduce the case of Barcelona. Um, next slide, please. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Barcelona uh, is a, a very dense city, a rather small city. We haven't done uh, the administrative reform that has benefited, for example, Asker. Uh, we are uh, embedded in a wider metropolitan area uh, and in a region called Catalonia, which is an autonomous region, which, as you probably know, has had some conflict with the state Spain. So our uh, administrative and political uh, structures are quite complex, and this makes uh, governance more difficult. Um, Barcelona as a city is a very complex, dynamic, rich place, but also fragile, uh, both socially and environmentally, for a number of reasons. And uh, our economy is uh, based on specialized services and increasingly tourism. And uh, we need to transform it into a more diversified economy, more based on knowledge. We have the base for this, and we have to, to improve and strengthen the, the tools. Um, next slide, please. So the Barcelona City Council uh, is a local government, uh, multi-purpose government, uh, has many competences. Although in, in some of the crucial ones, as education or health, it doesn't have the, the main competence, but all the complementary, but uh, it's engaged in almost all um, areas that can be related to the 2030 agenda. We have a staff of over 14,000 uh, people, um, a budget close to 3 billion, and uh, our Government is uh, made of 41 councillors, which are directly elected. And these councillors elect the mayor. So it's kind of parliamentary system, which is in a, the context right now is quite fragmented politically. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is the council. We have several parties. And since more than 10 years, there is no clear majority. Uh, all governments have been minority governments, and the current one, which was established in 2019, uh, has two main parties, and the competence for the 2030 agenda uh, is in the hands of the minor coalition party. And this means that we are not at the center of the power structure, but a bit at the margin. So um, nevertheless, um, we got the the task of localizing the 2030 agenda. Next slide, please. And the decision of the council was not only endorsing the agenda, but doing localization process in a rather ambitious level, at a target level. And we didn't um, work from scratch. Uh, our city council has a tradition for uh, innovation, for looking for the best solutions at all sectoral levels. It means we have a lot of planning. We have um, silos which are very strong and proud of themselves. And uh, therefore, the, the demand of doing this localization came not from a service, but from, the, from international relations, because Barcelona was everywhere present and we were asked, what are you doing for the uh, SDGs? And you couldn't provide an answer. So we set up to this task with a, a small team and we decided to build on, we had an, a, no other option as to build from what it already existed. Next slide, please. 
so we have to fill this in, you know, this, this uh, three main dimensions of uh, sustainable development. A fourth dimension will be the institutional one. And we saw uh, across the uh, city council what we had. Next slide, please. What we have is a lot of wonderful planning. Um, we have a long tradition in uh, sustainability engagement, which dates back from the end of the 90s, uh, the local agenda 21, but also regarding social inclusion, uh, gender equality, international cooperation, um, territorial development, and all the different policies you can imagine. Um, so we decided to screen all these uh, plans, identify the targets that would best uh, represent um, the localization of the UN SDG targets, what made more sense for the city, and the corresponding indicators. In the cases we didn't have this because there are also plans which are more based on rhetoric than they don't have quantifiable or operational targets, neither indicators. We started an, a lively bilateral dialogue um, endorsed by an interdepartmental commission, which allowed us to complete these gaps. So we came to a localized 2030 agenda. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, for example, just to have an idea of what we, we, we departed from very strong planning traditions, in this case, in the social domain, uh, since 2005, 2006, we have a strategy for social inclusion, which has engaged uh, over 700 organizations. Uh, they are structured in 14 action networks, which are quite effective. They have their own vision, their own plan. So we couldn't just go over this. And we, what we could provide was an integration between dimensions, which were often at odds between them social, economic, and environmental, especially in a fragmented council in which even within the government, we don't have the same vision for development. We have social democratic party, which is more pro-growth growth, and a leftist party, which is more uh, pro-preserving the environment and preserving social cohesion. So this, as my colleague before said, has helped us to go over uh, these cleavages and to, to, to share common ground, which has been very positive in a time of, of this fragmentation and polarization. Next slide, please. So, um, uh, yeah, I, this is not very relevant now. It's just what we did to, to translate the, the existing plans and to incorporate them into the, in the, our strategy. Next slide, please. Yeah. We came uh, in, 2020, in the year 2020 uh, to this uh, first BLR uh, on the left. Uh, and uh, I just want to show you how it is structured uh, for each uh, goal. Uh, next slide, please. You have uh, the identification of the relevant um, UN uh, targets and also the relevant plans and strategies uh, that have been approved by the city council and are valid. Uh, next slide, please. And in each of them, you find each target has a political definition and information about the context to justify, which justifies this inclusion in the, in the agenda, an operational target, which means it's defined in quantitative terms as far as possible. And then you get the indicate, key indicators uh, with indicating the origin, the source, the reference values, and these baseline graphics, which allow us to see uh, if we are progressing positively or negatively towards uh, the, the, the proposed target for 2030. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, and we, since uh, mid-2021, we have all this online. We have used uh, a free software, an open software platform called OpenSDG. And uh, it has been very, quite simple and useful for us to, to have all the information live 
uh, online with uh, microdata, metadata, and the uh, possibility to update it before we do a new BLR. Uh, it's really being an advancement because many researchers or people who are interested in this can go directly to this source and, and, and deep, uh, get deeper information. Next slide, please. Yeah, and last year we published, well, actually in the beginning of this year, we published the local voluntary review 2021. Um, as advanced by Fernando, we focused on the municipal action this time, uh, all the programs, projects that were mostly new ones, uh, many of them uh, created in response to COVID or in response to the need uh, to, to move towards sustainability. And we can provide, uh, besides the introduction and conclusions part for each SDG, an update of the indicators with the trend signaling, we describe the progress, the most outstanding action. We have done an exercise in budgetary alignment and the identification and a better explaining of, of best practices. Uh, what we've seen, a fast conclusion is that the pandemic has uh, worsened uh, most of economic indicators. Some of the crucial social indicators has brought some improvement in uh, the environmental indicators, uh, public safety indicators, and for example, the access to housing, which is one of our most pressing problems. But this, this tendency has been uh, very fastly reversed. Uh, when we have recovered the, the levels of activity before the pandemic, we have, we have a lot of pressure uh, due, due to tourism, due to um, economic activity, now price, housing prices are soaring again, economic activity has recovered, so it's, it's been a, a mirage, but it cut, has shown us that, for example, a reduction of the emissions is, strong reduction of emissions is really, really possible, has shown us, how, has shown us some ways to, to advance in the crucial um, targets. Next slide, please. Yeah, just an example of what we have in the report. Uh, this is the way to show the, the indicators. In this case, we haven't repl replicated the baseline. We'll get it again next year. And uh, the information about the budgetary alignment uh, regarding current expenditure and investment for each SDG. And we are working now on the alignment at the target level. So target and budget, uh, budget program, which is quite difficult because it, it's, but it's more, it will be more useful for managers of the programs when they know and which specific target their activity uh, affects. Next slide, please. Yeah, that here is an example of the presentation of good practice. Uh, this has been also useful for the sectors to, to reflect on what have they are doing and for all the organization to know uh, uh, all this. Uh, as Fernando said, one of the main assets of the VLR is that you have in, in, in one report an overview of the whole uh, organization of whole activity, which is was missing so far. Next slide, please. And now I want to focus in the, to, to finish my presentation on the lines of improvement that we are working on. Uh, first of all, to complete the targets and indicators we are still missing. Uh, the 2030 agenda has targets which are but complex to, to analyze, to measure. And we are working with research groups or internally uh, with different departments too. Uh, ascertain which would be the best way to interpret this target and to measure it. And we are finishing this. We want to introduce strongly comparative indicators that allow us not only to see what happens across the years, but also across territories which are significant for us, like the region, the metro area, the state, the European Union. And to prioritize, which Asker has already done, and it's a very, uh, really, Wonderful experience, what, what my colleague uh, has uh, told right now. And we are doing it uh, departing from specific criteria, the level of competence of the local administration, the level of expenditure, the strategic value, public opinion. So all these factors will be uh, factored in to um, set levels of priority because 
so many targets, uh, sometimes it's difficult to have really uh, an, uh, an effective view of, of what, what should be done. And for last but not least, uh, socializing, I mean, it means really advancing to the, to the point that the 23rd agenda is not the, the council agenda, but the city's agenda. And uh, with a stronger incorporation of social and economic and uh, cultural agents. And we have done this in the last year strongly with the uh, creation of a, a round table uh, with which the most important organizations and federations are presented. We have organized conference, a yearly conference on the 23rd agenda. And now for the first time, uh, the 23rd agenda awards, which will be uh, delivered in our second conference end of November. And now we are quite expecting what will happen next year in May, there are elections. And we would, much ex we would like that the 23rd agenda really gets in a stronger position in, within the organization so that we can really act as a, as a meta plan for all the plans and uh, to improve monitoring and evaluation across the organization, the organization through the VLR. And that's it. Um, thank you very much. And at your disposal in the debate. Thank you very much, Alamos. Uh, uh, it's a very, very impressive, you know, that, that localizing the, uh, you know, set targets and then uh, and then maybe step by step, you know, then, uh, you know, also the, you are now thinking of the comparability of the data uh, within territorial things. So I think the, 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 that progress is very, you know, impressive. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, and then from the, uh, maybe the, um, today we have uh, lots of Japanese audiences. I think that, that experience is very, you know, useful for the Japanese municipality, I think. And then, uh, yeah, also the, I think the, yeah, your VR is kind of the, you know, the result of the health check <laughs> of the uh, Barcelona city on the sustainability. So I think that, that, that will be very good communication to the, uh, within the council and also the beyond the council. So I, I think the, uh, yeah, congratulations we are your, success of the VRs. So thank you very much. Uh, so we will come back on to you uh, in the discussion session. Thank you very much. So now I would like to invite the last speakers uh, from Taiwan. So the uh, Ms. Xinjiao Yao. So the, she is the leading figure of the VR of the new Taipei. So I would like to uh, you know, the ask your experiences of the VR from the uh, your city. So throughout yours. Thank you, Kapalka. I want to thank I just so much and the previous speakers, uh, and especially for inviting uh, New Taipei to join the launching of the 2022 uh, State of the VLR uh, sharing session by IGES. I think I'm uh, the only city that is uh, represented here uh, from the region where IGES is, and New Taipei is very, very close to many of the Japanese cities. Uh, so I should say konnichiwa. <laughs> Most of people are, are um, uh, as we can see, a lot of uh, Japanese cities are online. Um, 10 minutes is really too short. Uh, so I decided if I have to say only one thing, and if I'm the only city out of the three from uh, Asia, what should I be um, sharing? Um, so I decided uh, we are all experts here. We're all working on SDGs. So let's talk about how SDG VOR lead New Taipei and Taiwan. First, I would like to share this photo. Uh, I think uh, uh, Martin, you've also shared this photo in your slides, but uh, it's amazing. This photo was taken in 2020. Uh, three years ago at World, uh, the 10th World Urban Forum. And three of us, three of the cities have already met there. I think Barcelona was at that time represented by uh, Mr. Miguel Rodriguez. Uh, he's at that time the commissioner for Agenda 2030, uh, what Martin was talking about. And Mayor uh, Lenny Korati uh, representing Esker City. And New Taipei is re represented by me. 
and the head of UN Habitat is the lady in yellow in hijab in the middle, and Penny, a representative from New York, hosting the session. So I think along, uh, because of SDG, uh, thanks to IGES, we are reconnecting all the dots uh, here at this session again. So um, that brought us together. Um, and that's why I want to start the presentation with this photo. And what is VLR to New Taipei? New Taipei is the largest city in Taiwan. Uh, many of the Japanese uh, friends know that New Taipei has 4 million population. Um, it's, this, it's the driving house of industrial city in Taiwan. Uh, it's the largest one in Taipei. We have so many people, so much uh, uh, to, to work on. Uh, why we started our journey of SDG VOR in 2019. It is more than just a report to us. It brings us purpose. I'm not saying that New Taipei City didn't have a purpose before SDG VOR. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that producing and understanding SDGs and processing VOR has clarified the purpose of mayor's pledges to citizens. So it clarifies the mayor's pledges to citizens. So I think this corresponds to uh, what Fernando says, uh, the five reasons why a city is doing VOR. So one, that clarifies the purpose, why, what is mayor's pledge to our citizens? Second, it also consolidates the purpose, what city government is working for. Because as you can see, um, New Taipei is such a big city and we have numerous policy that city government has been working, always working for, for our citizen, for our urban planning. By having SDG VOR, it helped us to consolidate all of this different policy across all different departments that could otherwise be working in silos. As you can see from Barcelona's uh, report as well, it is a huge city. It has so many different targets. It has so many different departments that has to meet different uh, targets, agendas with different indicators. So it helps us consolidate that purpose. And more importantly, it sends a very strong signal and message to other cities, including domestically and internationally. It sends a very strong message to them. What our cities, what New Taipei City's future will look like and what kind of partners we are seeking along the way. So I think that's why VOR is more than just a report to us. So a very quick uh, look at i give you a quick journey, uh, a quick tour of our SDG VOR journey. So uh, by launching our uh, VOR in 2019, we have hosted, co-hosted and participated in more than 39 activities and events, which includes participants from more than 89 countries and almost 300 cities. And it reaches to more than 6,000 uh, universities, groups, foreign missions, influencers, uh, international uh, uh, groups, uh, organizations, and some uh, in individuals via online, offline, podcast, podcast publication channels. So that is really exciting uh, for New Taipei, especially for me, uh, who is in charge of international uh, affairs. And our first VOR that published in 2019 has also been recognized uh, and acknowledged by many of the awards. For example, we are the only city in Taiwan that is invited to co-sign the New York City VOR declaration. And we also received acknowledgments by winning the IF Design Award in communications and gold medal of the Taiwan Corporate Sustainability Awards, as well as we are awarded by the press in 2020 that we are the most sustainable city in Taiwan. So these are all uh, the achievements 
that have helped us along the way after we launched our uh, VOR in 2019. And as here, I'm showing you uh, some of the photos. This uh, slide is especially dedicated to IGES. Why? Because IGES has been with us since the very beginning. As uh, uh, this, uh, uh, in one of the middle photo in the up row, as you can see, our mayor is wearing a white chef suit. And next to him is uh, a guest from Aegis. Uh, he is, I think he's already left Aegis, uh, Hiro Taka-san. Um, but at that time, he came all the way to Taiwan to join our VOR launch party. Uh, also in 2020 in Abu Dhabi at the 10th World Urban Forum, I also co-chair, uh, co uh, uh, co uh, participated in one of the forum with Dr. Junichi Fujino. Uh, he's also from IGES. So, and this year in uh, our uh, Earth Day uh, Summit, uh, Earth Day Forum in uh, April, we're very happy that Fernando uh, is able to join us uh, and sharing with us what IGES has been seeing in our session called uh, SDGs city leaders of 2022. So in, in uh, our, since our first uh, VOR, we have seen a lot of uh, success and recognitions. And then, but we only published our second VOR after two years, which is last year in November in 2021. Why does it take us so long? And what's the difference between the first VOR in 2019 and the second one in 2021? So the first one, uh, our title is Build Our Own Ideal City. That very first VOR of New Taipei is a testament of how cities should be built following the guidelines of SDGs and how should we work together for cities? But on our second VOR, we focus back to people. We want to look at people-centric issues. That's why we title it, Leaving No One Behind. And you know why? Because between 2019 and 2021, uh, COVID-19 hit all of us. So there are a few features I would like to highlight uh, from our latest VOR. We have a full chapter uh, that is dedicated to COVID-19 and our city government's response to it and how COVID-19 affected people's lives. We also want to contribute this chapter to people who have lost their lives and their families. And we will re always remember uh, this battle and learn from it. But in our second VOR, we've also done a lot of rethinking. Uh, that also because we have a lot of reflections from uh, COVID-19. Because if one is hit by COVID-19, everyone is hit by it. So I think people and people-centric policy and people-centric urban building is more important than ever. So in our second BOR, we have collected uh, 60 best practices from 28 different governmental agencies and departments. And especially the theme going through this 60 best practices is public and private partnership. And also we present it in a way to tell stories of people's daily lives. And we also rethink again with all these targets, indicators, index, metrics, as both Asker City as well as Barcelona City presented previously, these numerous indicators, what do they mean to us? So we rethink about our SDG uh, metrics in our second VOR. We think only with the purpose we have, we should carefully select these metrics 
to reflect the purpose. And we also need to think about the previous, previous page. Yeah, thank you. We also need to think about uh, the interconnection between different metrics. So that's why we are the first one in Taiwan to collaborate with Swiss Stockholm Environment Institute and use the sustainable development tools they released in 2021. That is the latest tool at that time we can use for analysis. But each best uh, practice, as you can see, we have a small column uh, on the top right corner with subject indications. It has also impact on goals, uh, different 17 goals, and impact between goals. What are the trade-offs? So that we can see each best practice still has room to improve. So in this way, we hope to improve our methodology and provide researchers with more information, such as IGES. And we hope uh, our metrics uh, has uh, improved and that helps with your analysis. I would also like to mention when you rethink about the metrics, for example, in uh, target zero hunger, what is new type based indicator for zero hunger? which is represented by our local goal, uh, 67. In 67, we actually chose the supply of organic vegetables to local school students as an indicator for zero hunger. Because by providing this metrics, this indicator, we are not only helping with the goal, zero hunger, we are also helping to grow organic uh, vegetable business in which we can form a better circular cycle, both for target uh, one, zero hunger, as well as for innovation for industry. And in our second VOR, it's also very important, as I say, the theme going through is public-private partnership. So we actually invited young designers from our city and involved local companies to use waste materials and make them into package of VOR. Uh, these are the four companies leaders. As you can see, they are all young uh, female designers. They are great examples in my city to upcycle resources that otherwise would be treated as waste. Some of the material, including the wasted steels, while we're renovating this uh, uh, our, our city hall, the other is reuse of disposable fiber boards in the production uh, of process of um, computer circuit board. I don't know if I still have the time to play the video. Maybe, uh, uh, yeah, maybe the, yeah, um, yeah, time is up. So the, yeah, yes. maybe we will. No, I think I will not play the, uh, the video. And, uh, but I will uh, give a brief introduction to our SDG logos. It is a Chinese character of people and people hand in hand side by side with goal 11, the sustainable community in the center, which is the orange color. And when they move in harmony, it blooms like a flower. And uh, in our Earth Day Forum, our mayor uh, has declared new Taipei city will be net zero by uh, 2050. And I would also like to uh, say that from the last November, when we announced our uh, VOR until in April, when we hosted our uh, Earth Day Forum, and when Mayor announced that New Taipei will be net zero by 2050, all these actions are volunteered done by New Taipei City. And we are announcing all these policies ahead of central government's policy. And from this announcement, we have seen so many responses from the industry and enterprises. So joining us in the Earth Day Forum, 
are not just local governments or researching departments. Google is also there representing a mobility in harmony by Taipei, which is a Tesla of Taiwan, also joining our uh, estate forum. American uh, Chamber of Commerce is also endorsing our efforts. So this is uh, uh, going uh, beyond our imagination. And it's not because of SDGs, VLR. It's because it sends a very clear signal to all the parties in Taiwan that new Taipei city is doing that. So they can join us in all the policies that we're doing. And since 2019 to 2021, mayor and our various departments has announced a lot of the policy, just to name a few. For example, we have already signed climate emergency declaration. We are the first in Taiwan. And we've also uh, drafted new Taipei city municipal self-government ordinance for zero carbon city, which is in the drafting uh, process. We are also declared the plan and roadmap for net zero emission by 2050. These are all initiation from different departments of New Taipei City government, but we are all going towards the same goal. And what I wanted to say to conclude is that uh, the ESG dialogue is the, uh, is, is the new website. I will encourage everyone to look at it. And next slide. Uh, SDG v VOR. VOR is a tool, is a, a, a testimony, is a statement of SDG for the government, and it represents a paradigm shift. And now we're thinking, how about ESG? There are so many indicators. There are so many uh, uh, resources are out there. What should they be doing? So, so what city government is doing now is to engage with more partners like-minded, whether they are in uh, circular economy or ESG, to join us because we have spoken our purpose aloud. So I would like to conclude that cities may be the major causes of uh, climate change, but city can also be the solution. And by uh, issuing voluntary local review, I think we're stressing the voluntary essence here, which can set the right mindset and by voluntarily taking actions, combining with partnership, I think private sector and public sec sector can work together in engagement and helping uh, New Taipei and other cities to achieving SDGs. Thank you. Sorry for uh, 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 using a little more time uh, than planned. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for uh, the, the telling stories. The uh, it's kind of impressive that you know the we are it's not a report that 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 is more process and then also the that is kind of symbolic one uh, you know which show the kind of the uh, direction of the sustainability of the city and also the uh, the some engagement process. So I think the it's very impressive. You know the maybe uh, the you showed the very well about the a lot of VRs in New Taipei. So thank you very much. So I coming uh, go back to uh, go coming to the uh, discussion sessions, but uh, we have only fifteen minutes to go. But um, please excuse us to you know uh, the. Um, Make the uh, like uh, you know the five minutes or kind of long, uh, longer. So the uh, maybe I excuse that. And if you have any uh, for the participants, if you have any questions to the speakers, please write down your questions in the Q A box. The I will try to you know uh, the ask the question uh, to the speaker as much as possible. So the uh, for the discussion part, you know um, we have uh, we had uh, lots of stories, and then the, I think you know yeah even for me that that. that you know, we have a lot of questions we want to ask, <laughs> but uh, maybe I would like to focus on the message to the uh, like uh, local governments, uh, the staff uh, who want to, you know, uh, who, who want to join the VR journey from now on. So maybe I would like focus uh, that, that perspective. So the, and then, then my first question is the, um, maybe, you know, um, you have any kind of, you know, um, message to the uh, you know the cities who want to join the real journey so maybe you may have some you know, um now after you completed the first and second the brs so you may have 
something you want maybe you you think uh maybe this this point that uh the uh you know when you yeah uh, when you want to somehow the yeah uh you want to share with the uh, newcomers of VRs, you know uh, what they should know <laughs> about the uh, VR process and what what you want to stress to the newcomers. So the maybe the yeah maybe I would like to ask from the uh, Martin about that point. Well, thank you and uh, thank you so much for the uh, presentations from Barcelona and New Taipei. It's really interesting to see that we have. Uh, similar kind of challenges when uh, when doing the VLRs. And I, I see that we also have the, the same uh, challenges when it comes to overcome all the uh, monitoring uh, details and, uh, and, um, uh, and how to review this later. But uh, we have only done one VLR so far. So I, I was really uh, interested to, to know how how the second VLR, uh, the process, how how it's easier or more difficult to write a second VLR because um, what we what we did was uh, basically to try and sort out what have we done so far in the merging process and how we incorporated the SDGs in our uh, master plan for the municipal uh, for, for the building of the municipality and now. Within the next two years, we will have the local plans uh, in installed. So, so now we uh, will be ready in in a year's time, maybe two years, to to write another VLR. And that's uh, uh, it. Would be interesting to hear uh, uh, cities who have done a second one. Um, maybe they have some ideas on how we can approach this. Okay. Thank you very much. So yeah, I think the maybe you know uh, the for the uh, you know the um, cities who want to do first VRs and also the, the cities who want to do the second VRs. So maybe you know uh, there is a lot of uh, lot of things we want uh, they want to know. So the uh, yeah maybe the the Lamong, uh, yeah you did the second VRs and I think the you know uh, you are kind of more strategically think about the step by step approach from the first one to the second one. So could you um you know, briefly explain uh the you know what, what the difference is the first one and the second one to, for the approach wise or somehow you know, or yeah your kind of the tips for the second viewers yeah thank you well it was a question that uh, it ha it was um has pursued me <laughs> since the beginning of this task uh i think that the do the same vlr each year is, is too much and it doesn't bring that much information. It's maybe cost benefit, it, it doesn't pay for. But we decided to do this, uh, that some certain contents like the updating of the, the crucial indicators must be there every year. But uh, each, each edition can specialize, can put a focus on a specific item. Uh, in the, the first one was dedicated to diagnostics and, uh, and uh, alignment of the planning. The second one has uh, put more stress on action, municipal action. So all the new and good practices, especially. And the third one, which we are planning for this year, we'll try to incorporate non-municipal action uh, broader. So uh, as uh, shown by New Taipei, uh, so experiences by private firms, social organizations, uh, we don't know if we, we will be able to quantify this, but at least to highlight the best practices and to, to show a way for them. And yeah, it's, it's about combining a, a, a core which is common every year and on, or every edition and a, um, a second part, which is only for that edition. But I wanted to say also that to the cities that are uh, thinking of doing this or not, that I think it's first of all a political uh, matter, uh, a matter of vision, imagination, and secondly, a technical, uh, uh, a technical issue, because uh, without political commitment, the rest could become something very empty and uh, useless. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the final, you know, your final comment is really, you know, significant, you know, political wills and also technical things uh, should be go together. So the, uh, yes, thank you very much. 
So the uh, now the uh, yeah, uh, I would like to ask uh, Xin Xiao and uh, about the your second VR in kind of your, your kind of the uh, experience of the first and second VRs, and also uh, maybe I would like to ask you about the some participatory processes in UTEC, and then uh, it's impressive for to include the young young generations in the VR process. Uh, could you, you know, briefly explain uh, the these kind of things? You the second VR comes quite naturally to us because um, even though we didn't set out to do two VRs in the beginning, but I think it corresponds to, uh, I think maybe in Asia context, leadership is really important in uh, promoting a new policy. Our mayor's uh, term is four years. So he was elected um, and inaugurated by the end of 2018. That's why it's very important for New Taipei to seize that moment to launch such a new uh, coordinated actions in the first year of his term in 2019. So, so uh, we also need to report on the achievements and if he has uh, his pledge has been realized by the end of his first four year term, which ends uh, by this year in 2022. So in the very beginning, we know that uh, VOR needs to show uh, uh, mayor's pledges and city government's coordinated efforts in leading New Taipei City as the most sustainable city. So the second VOR comes naturally. But why we include many uh, young designers into our second VOR process, it's also, it also comes naturally because from the responses to the first VOR, we find that by finding purpose, it helps us internally to align all different departments' goals uh, in a very positive way. And it also goes beyond our imagination that a lot of younger generations has reached out to New Taipei that they are doing similar things, but nobody noticed what they are doing before. So they approached us and joined our efforts. And during uh, COVID-19, a lot of business were also heavily hit especially uh, design houses, because there are a lot of events got canceled or delayed or postponed. So naturally our second VR has become a joint effort and also uh, become uh, a very beautiful product that when you collaborate with young generation, with people share the same purpose and inspiration, how beautiful uh, it will be. So again, the second VOR consolidates and further our agenda. And we are so glad to see that more industries and entrepreneurs uh, has uh, echoed this uh, in our other events earlier this year. And that's why it pushed us to work on the ESG platform. Okay, thank you very much. So the, uh, now uh, we have one question from the uh, audience the, about indicators. So what do you consider to be most critical step when choosing indicator to monitoring the process? So uh, I think that that is a headache of the city officials to choose a monitor and localizing indicator. So maybe the uh, maybe first uh, I would like to ask Ramon, yeah, you, you had a lot of experience of the localizing targets. So yeah, the, the indicators, do you have any uh, yeah. Could you answer uh, that question first? Yes, the, the, the most obvious answer to this is that the availability of this, of the information, the data, because it's not obvious in most cities, especially middle and small cities, um, and the comparability of them. Uh, normally, there is a core of indicators which are shared by across uh, administrative levels. And uh, there should be an effort to ask to, or to request regional and national, national authorities to, to make possible that these indicators are uh, available at local level. Uh, on the other hand, if you are a bigger city, maybe you have your own sources, your own surveys, and they, they have plenty of indicators which are, can be very good for a nuanced analysis, not so good for comparison because you don't have nothing to compare, but we, we have integrated both, both sets of indicators. Comparable ones and specific mm -hmm. ones that 
Yeah. 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 Um. Yes. Yeah, so the yeah, it's yeah, it's important to the you know like a com yeah, which which are compares and also the very basic one and also the availability you know, like assessment of the availability and the selections. Okay. So the uh yeah. So the uh I can can I ask the same question to the uh Ms. Chow? You know, you, you did the, some you know indicator kind of the assessment uh, with the ACI. Yeah, I think SCI is uh, a really helpful tool uh, last year because it, it gives us uh, a lot of uh, uh, new uh, tools that we can improve from our very, our first uh, VOR. And also we found that because we're the first uh, VOR report uh, review in Taiwan, so a lot of other cities are uh, sharing uh, their questions with us. And there is also one thing I would like to add that uh, now every city in Taiwan, there are 22 different cities in Taiwan, they are now all have their VOR, maybe not uploaded to IGES's website. And why they are doing that is not because of us, it's because the, our national government has actually requested uh, all the city or encouraged uh, every city to do it. And uh, um, um, but I think there is a very interesting, um, and that affects on the indicators a lot. Since VOR focuses on voluntary <laughs> local review. So the indicators, you're, you're free to choose all of the indicators, but when you are required or encouraged to do so in, uh, in a, a strong way, then the indicators you are choosing, are they really that meaningful or purposeful? So. I've uh, read all the 22 different VORs. Uh, I can read the mindset behind each of the VOR. I think it's still the best. These indicators are collected uh, voluntarily from different departments and you can cross exam them and uh, align them onto a few uh, themes and focuses for the whole city. So for example, for new type A, it's very clear we're focusing on net zero. So every buildings in the future need to follow the new, new building code. Uh, all the industries um, need to work on uh, zero coal power, etc. So this is coordinated. But if you look at uh, the VOR, those indicators, some I think are not so strong or not so purposeful. I, I, and, and I think, for example, collaborating SEI and other outside experts, especially such as IGES, I think will be a tremendous help. And that's why we have been recommended to other cities in Taiwan. When they are using indicators, they, they can really go to the experts that will help them. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's kind of the uh, surprising that you know the uh, all twenty two you know local governments did VRs, and then uh, yeah, it's really fantastic to uh, the uh, national government encourage that, and also the uh, good good stories about the indicators. So maybe we need to think you know the uh, why we need to localize the you know, the indicators, but uh, maybe for the like you know. Uh, the assessment purpose, maybe compatibility should be secure somehow. So maybe how to choose the you know the, the, the indicators to depends on the you know the, the city's purposes of the BRs. So having said that, you know the uh, Martin, uh, could you you know share your kind of thoughts on that? Part of the indicators, and then I think the um, you mentioned somehow no way the national government has uh, you know kind of the um like a uh, guideline for the master plan or did they, did, do they have any uh, the, this, the, the national guideline for the indicators or, you know, yeah, any kind of the like uh, implication from your experience? Uh, yes, we, of course, we have the, the guidelines for municipal reporting uh, unrelated to the SDGs, but now uh, because of uh, the national expectations for municipals, uh, municipalities in Norway to, to report on the SDGs as well, uh, we were looking at all the different uh, KPIs and the sets of mo uh, monitoring models. <clears throat> and uh, this resulted in, in a collaboration between the statistical uh, uh, Norway and the um, and uh, municipal, all the municipalities to start a project called the taxonomy, taxonomy for the uh, indicators related to the SDGs. And that's 
looking at uh, the both the relevance of all the KPIs that we receive and uh, uh, the data availability uh, and also uh, the monitoring cycles, uh, how, how, how well do we receive the data and how relevant are they? And also for the taxonomy project, it was also to look at the impact on each SDG and, and if there's any trade-offs. Um, so when this uh, during this summer, I think we will have the, the last three KPI sets for analysis into the taxonomy. And uh, I think then we will, we will have a uh, basic overview of what do the KPI sets offer in terms of uh, SDG monitoring and how is this relevant for the municip municipal reporting. And then uh, our first finding was that uh, mainly the, the SDGs uh, monitoring uh, KPIs that we received from various different kinds of institutions um, they were relevant on some areas and on some areas, for example, the impact was not so defined on some of the SDGs. So we had to find uh, monitoring uh, KPIs for, for specific SDGs. And we were looking uh, you know, around the world for uh, the UNECE, the OECD and, and et cetera. And, um, and I think we have uh, uh, probably 15 sets of KPIs now relevant to the SDGs uh, analyzed in terms of both impact and availability and uh, possible trade-offs. Uh, so at the end of the summer, I think we will we'll, uh, reach out to you again for the, for the results in English if, uh, if you're interested. And I left the link to the launch of the project in the, in the chat. But it's been very difficult to... Uh, you know, it, it, it's easy to highlight your own efforts when it comes to the SDGs, but then when you when you look at how to report on each of them, uh, you have to find relevant uh, ways to monitor and report. And uh, I think that's uh, that's a huge task to overcome when there are so many uh, indicators available. Okay, thank you. And very the municipalities are very different. But, you know, Barcelona is a big city. Oscar is a mm -hmm. fairly small municipality in in the European context. So, so the the KPIs they work different for uh, for each city and municipality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Very thoughtful with the comments. Yeah, yeah. So indicators things is uh, the um, very. Uh, then the difficult, but uh, uh, yeah, but the, the the lesson is maybe we think about the local context and then uh, choose necessarily the indicators uh, within the available ones. So the yeah, that that is very important. So uh, yes, uh, the uh, like uh, yeah. Jen, you can uh, raise your hands, but uh, the time is up. So I think this is kind of fine. I, I would like to ask everybody to uh, make a final comment. Yeah, um, maybe, you know, if I we, we discuss this VR things, you know, we need some all day long. So, but uh, the time is limited. So I would like to ask your final comments on that. So uh, maybe, you know, um, yeah. So I think the uh, Lamont mentioned the you know, VR is kind of very, costly and time consuming, but, uh, you know, you want to do, you know, the, yeah, the new type base and then about so that, uh, you know, second one, then uh, you, yeah, you mentioned you want to the next one, also the SK also, or if you need to have and on. So why, why you do the VRs and what the benefits of VRs, you know, that, that maybe, you know, uh, please include that uh, aspect in your final comments. So the, uh, maybe the, uh, I would like to ask, uh, you know, uh, Chen Yusong first, and then the, the, uh, the Lamont, and then finally Martin. Okay. So the, yeah, from the Chen Yusong, you're first. Uh, I cannot hear your voice. Thank you. Thank you, Kadaoka. The final words would be, um, I think cities are very important on making the world more sustainable. And cities are the interlocutor between the sustainable, sustainable goal and the millions way of doing it. So I think cities are paving the way and cities are uh, supporting all the citizens and local business onto uh, the way uh, to more a more sustainable world. No matter how big or how small your city is, that should be uh, what the city government should be striving for. And 
to work on SDG. As actually, uh, I would like to tell all our city government uh, peers and partners, it actually helps you sometimes in the swimming pool of all your daily duties, numerous works, numerous phone calls, numerous meetings, you can actually get your head up and look at the sky, what are other people are doing that can give you some room to breathe and to rethink why you are working for citizens every day. What are other cities are doing? What are the challenges they are facing? So for example, uh, today's meeting helps our department again to rethink why three years later, three cities meet again in this summit. And that actually gives us a little bit of goosebumps. And we feel that we're recharged again uh, for the next few days. <laughs> so do it, that, 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 that's the only way to know how great cities can be. Okay, thank you very much. The important cities, also the partnership among cities, and then some peer learning, you know, the experiences that that, that is very important. So, the Ramon, and could you give your final comments? Yeah, I would say that uh, achieving a sustainable world and sustainable cities will only be possible if we find another way to to live and to to get along together, uh, based more and more on cooperation and. Uh, Nowadays, the only platform um, which is global, which is widely shared, uh, which would make possible this cooperation is the 2030 Agenda. So this is a common ground, which can be very useful to overcome this trend towards uh, polarization, ideological and political, which makes impossible any meaningful collab collaboration. And uh, this is, a, I think, a good a reason. <laughs> For doing this work, and uh, I would uh, encourage any city, uh, small, medium, or, or big, to, to do this. And uh, go ahead. Okay, thank you for the, uh, the very strong and uh, encouraging message from you. So the yes, uh, and then the finally, uh, Martin, uh, could you you know uh, provide your final comments? Yes. I think uh, I, I think uh, one should read other VLRs before you start doing them yourselves because I think that all the knowledge that you gain from how other cities have worked on uh, these matters is really helpful and I think all the VLRs that we have read before we started ours was really helpful to see not only to get new ideas on how to do things in uh, in Norway but also how to how to pursue the VLR uh, structuring, uh, how, how to do this. And also, this has also led us to have extensive contact with many other cities that we would never uh, be in touch with otherwise and exchange ideas. And, and, you know, we have common issues that we have to solve and we can discuss this and cooperate on how to solve them. And I think this is, uh, is a really helpful tool, not only to the VLR, but to, the, to solving the SDGs in general to cooperate uh, between cities uh, globally, and uh, I'm really looking forward to reading the IGES report on this because you have read all the VLRs, and uh, we we haven't got time to this yet. But uh, I want to thank you so much for uh, for uh, for this webinar, and uh, also I think a last comment would be that when you make sure that your action counts, uh, when you plan for the VLR and you promise to monitor your work, uh, make sure that you uh, put some goals up that will really count towards uh, achieving the goals. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the uh, another encouragement statements uh, for the other cities uh, which want to you know the um, jump into the real journey. So the uh, thank you very much. So um, yes, uh, before the um, concluding this panel. So I would like to thank all speakers uh, to telling the very important, you know, useful stories uh, to the participants. Also to share your, uh, the uh, thoughts on the VRs. So I think the VRs, it's not the easy task, but uh, it accounts and it's, you know, we can, uh, we get some reward from that processes. So the, um, yeah, thank you very much for your participation. And then I just would like to continue.
uh, to you know like uh, you know the uh, encourage the BL's movements uh, through the peer learnings and also the uh, yeah, got some analysis of the BR. So I'd like to ask your the continuous uh, the the support. I just and also the uh, you know your partnership with us. So thank you very much. So uh, maybe we will meet together. Uh, not after three years, but the more, you know, <laughs> maybe in a the, in the shorter time uh, to learn each other again. So thank you very much for the speakers and also thank you very much particip participants uh, to uh, participate in this webinar. Thank you very much. So I would like to conclude this webinar. Thank you so arigato. much. Thank you. Arigato. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so thank you. much. Thank you, Kadaoka. Thank you, thank you Ramon. Thank you, Martin. Thank you.